Welcome to Mind, Muscle, and Metabolism, the Jade Tita Podcast. Here you get the in-depth science and practical tools needed to change your body, optimize your health, and elevate your mindset. I'm Dr. Jade Tita, and here is what I want you to know. You are different. You are as unique on the inside chemically as you are on the outside physically. And those differences matter. They matter because there is only one rule to achieving optimal health, fitness, and body change. That rule, do what works for you. My goal is to help you understand exactly how. I'm so excited you're here. Your transformation starts right now. Okay, guys, welcome to the podcast today. Today, we're going to be talking about something that I am pretty good at, (laughs) basically way better than I am at uh, fat loss. We're going to be talking about muscle gain. Uh, I'm doing this podcast just because I've been seeing uh, plenty of questions about this recently, so I thought I'd put it together, and this should be a pretty quick one because this isn't rocket science. Uh, Well, at least for me, it's not. And for people sort of who've been in the industry and been in the bodybuilding world, uh, this is pretty well known. But for whatever reason, due to many of the newfangled exercise routines and the huge focus on fat loss and diets such as keto and paleo and, uh, you know, intermittent fasting and all this kind of stuff, uh, there are many people who get confused because they don't have a background in this necessarily. So they don't know how to manage um, muscle gain versus fat loss. And so let's talk about that here for a minute. Uh, if you've been following the podcast for a while or you've been following me, you know that I have what I call the five laws of metabolism. And these are just laws that I've come up with to help myself and the people I teach understand how the metabolism works and functions. And one of those laws I call the rule of metabolic multitasking or the law of metabolic multitasking. And essentially what this law says is that it is very difficult for the metabolism to build muscle while burning fat. Now, if you are a beginner, that happens pretty easily for you. And if you're on anabolic steroids, it also happens pretty easy. But for everybody else, that is kind of the metabolic equivalent of uh, tapping your head and rubbing your belly. It is possible, but it's difficult to do. The body likes to be in either anabolism, building tissue up, or catabolism, breaking tissue down. So the body likes to either be building muscle and fat or burning muscle and fat. And this is very important to understand. Now, there are many things that you can do to make the metabolism a better multitasker. For example, upping your protein intake makes the body a better multitasker. Uh, Moving your exercise regime further towards, towards weight training and further away from cardiovascular type stuff makes your body a better multitasker. But I want you to understand this idea because for some reason people get very confused and they think that if they're working out and eating correctly, that they're automatically going to build muscle and burn fat. And that is simply not true. In order for you to burn fat, you need a calorie deficit. That's part of what you are required to have. This is known. And the same thing happens in reverse. If you're trying to build up a tissue, muscle, you have to have a calorie excess or a calorie surplus. Obviously, if you have calorie deficits, you're going to burn some fat, hopefully, but you also could be building uh, or burning muscle along with that fat. Uh, And oftentimes, people are doing that because of the way they lose, uh, you know, weight, doing this eat less, exercise more approach and doing cardio-centered diets, uh, you know, diets with cardio-centered activity versus diets with weight training activity. But still, even if you're doing a diet and you're cutting calories and you're doing weight training, you may slow or stop the loss of muscle, but you won't gain it. Um, Now, when it comes to building muscle, you are going to need to add calories to your regime. And this law of metabolic multitasking is what gets people in a lot of trouble. This is why you see many people who will end up skinny fat, meaning that they go 
on this thing and they try to lose fat, but they end up losing muscle as well. So they end up, you know, sort of skinnier and flabbier, not really what they were looking for. Or you have people who go on, uh, you know, high protein, high carb diets and weight training and end up muscle fat. They end up gaining muscle, but they end up gaining fat along with it. Um, and we all have different variations of this. Some people are more likely to be skinny fat. These would be people that would be hard gainers, meaning they would have a difficult time gaining muscle. Then you have people who tend to get muscle fat. This would include someone like me, who I gain muscle really easily, and I gain fat really easily. And so uh, with those individuals, we would call them easy gainers. And so I'll cover this a little bit when we go through building muscle. But when we're thinking about building muscle, and once we understand this idea of the law of metabolic multitasking, we can then get into sort of what I call the four major parameters for thinking about building muscle. And I call this CCPW, two C's, a P, and a W, calories, carbs, protein, and weights. Now, there is a lot to building muscle, but in this, uh, you know, podcast and in my teachings, one of the reasons why people tend to follow me and one of the fee- things I get feedback on is that um, to try to keep it simple and that I tend to, uh, when, when people are really enjoying what I'm saying, I keep it simple and uh, make complex ideas more simple. And so rather than going into, you know, leucine and mTOR and all this biochemistry around building muscle, I'm just going to stick to the basics here and help you have um, some to-dos in this short podcast. So, first of all, calories. You need a calorie surplus. For most people, if you take your body weight in pounds and multiply 15 to 20, multiply by 15 to 20, you're going to be in the calorie range that you're going to that you're probably going to be able to build muscle with. Now, this is going to vary for many people. Now, if you're a hard gainer, someone who tends to get skinny fat when you're trying to lose weight, you may want to take your body weight times 20. Now, if you're an easy gainer like me, you may want to take your body weight times 15. And this will help stave off some of the fat gain that might come along with the muscle gain. So when it comes to calories, remember you have to have a calorie surplus. Multiply your body weight in pounds times 15 to 20, and that will get most people who are working out in the range that is required to perhaps put on muscle. Now, just like with fat loss, it's going to vary from person to person, and therefore you will have to tweak your calories up or down based on your results. And typically, if you're a hard gainer, you may have to tweak your calories way up. And if you're an easy gainer like me, meaning an easy uh, gainer from fat and muscle, you may want to tweak your calories down a little bit. Okay, so that's the calorie piece. That's the first C in the CCPW sort of formula. Now, carbs are one of these things that is pretty controversial. But let me explain to you, carbohydrates um, are one of the best ways to release the hormone insulin. Now, there's all kinds of talk about testosterone and human growth hormone and all these anabolic hormones to build muscle. There is no more anabolic hormone in the body than insulin. As a matter of fact, without insulin, you cannot actually get fuel, amino acids, and glucose into cells for the cells to build the muscle in the first place and to be able to uh, do the things that they need to do. So insulin is the most anabolic hormone in the body. Without insulin, you are probably not going to be able to build uh, muscle. And we can see this in individuals who have decreased insulin production. Type 1 diabetics tend to be very skinny and wiry, uh, you know, because of their inability to produce uh, insulin. So carbs, how many carbs? Well, I'll give you some guidelines, keeping in mind that we are all individuals. But I would say you want your macronutrients, those ratios of protein, carbohydrate to fat, or carbohydrate, protein to fat. You want at least 40% carbohydrate you want at least 40% carbohydrate to drive this insulin, uh, you know, sort of management so you can get enough insulin. Now, keep in mind, I have this in sort of a hierarchy. Calories first, carbs second, protein third when it comes to building muscle. So CCP and then W, weights come last. And I have this in a hierarchy because calories are more important than carbs, which are more important than protein, and diet is more important than the weight training. 
you're not going to be able to put on muscle by pushing around a lot of weights if you can't get the diet correct, just like you're not going to be able to burn fat by doing a bunch of exercise if you can't get the diet correct. So the CCPW, calories, carbs, protein, weight training, is in a hierarchy. So we've got the calories, we've got the carbs. Now what about protein? Well, protein, just like carbohydrates, also stimulates insulin. Uh, A lot of people don't know that. So protein stimulates insulin as well. But there's a big difference between having insulin and high blood glucose or insulin with high blood amino acids. Now, to build muscle, we want both. We want insulin and high blood glucose, meaning we need to eat carbs, and we want insulin and high blood amino acids, meaning we need to eat protein. So how much protein? Well, if you're an easy gainer like me, You don't really need a whole bunch of protein. You don't need to add a whole bunch in. So I say one gram per pound of lean body mass if you're an easy gainer like me. Now, if you're a hard gainer, then you want to probably go one gram per pound of body weight, right? So hard gainers, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Easy gainers, one gram per pound of lean body mass. Now, Just in case some people don't know what lean body mass is, take your body weight and uh, multiply that times the percent of your body fat. So, for example, just to make the math easy, if I'm 100 pounds and I have 10% body fat, then my lean body mass would be what? 90 pounds, right? So that's how you figure that out. Then I would eat 90 grams of protein if I am an easy gainer. So... Uh, Obviously, if I'm a hard gainer, I would eat 100 grams of protein because that would be one gram per pound of body weight. If I'm an easy gainer, I would find my lean body mass, which is my body weight times the percent of my body fat, and then that would be the amount of grams that I would eat in protein. So again, calories, 15 to 20 times body weight. Carbs, 40% of your macronutrient ratio. Protein, one gram per pound of body weight if you are a hard gainer, and one gram per pound of lean body weight if you are an easy gainer. And then finally, we get into some of the stuff around uh, weight training. Well, actually, before I do that, let me also talk about meal frequency and those kinds of things just so uh, you can understand how that works. When I talk about... um, nutrition, I came up with a formula in clinical practice um, because I needed to quickly tell people about nutrition in a way that made sense to them. So I would teach all my clients a formula, and the formula was a three-part formula that uh, basically went like this. The number of meals, that was discussed first, then the number of meals uh, of those total meals that were protein and fiber only, and then the number of meals that were mixed meals, mixed macronutrient meals of carbs, protein, and fat. Now, when you're trying to gain muscle, I like to use uh, a ratio of five, two, and three. So this would be five meals per day, two of those meals being protein-based, meaning no starch or fat, essentially protein shakes, and then three of those meals being mixed macronutrients meals with a protein, a carb, and some fat mixed in. And this is a good place to start. Now, you could go four to two, where it's four meals per day and two protein shakes with two regular meals, or you could go six, three, three. But five, two, two for most people is a really good way to think about this because essentially you're going to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then I like to do a protein shake, 20 to 40 grams, about an hour to two hours before. I wouldn't do it uh, in the after an hour before exercise, but you'd have a post-workout sort of uh, protein intake, 20 to 40 grams, 40 grams two hours prior to working out, 20 grams one hour prior to working out, and then you'd have a, that would be a pre-workout Uh, protein shake rather, and then a post-workout shake of 20 to 40 grams as well. And so this allows you to very simply go breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then have some protein before your um, workout and some protein after your 
workout. And of course, this is just a beginning place because some people, some very hard gainers, may want to do something like 5-0-5, meaning they do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And those protein shakes, they add a little bit of carbohydrate into them. So perhaps maybe they do 40 grams of a protein shake with a little bit of banana and some coconut oil two hours before their exercise. And then right after their workout, they do the same shake, you know, 20 to 40 grams of protein powder with a banana in it and some fat right after. And oftentimes this will be required for some of the hard gainers, people that have a difficult time gaining muscle to add in, you know, some extra calories and things like that. So for someone who's an easy gainer, like me, I would probably do something along the lines of a 4-2-2 approach or a 5-2-3 approach, whereas people who are sort of hard gainers, I would suggest either doing, you know, sort of a 5-2-3 approach or a 6-3-3 approach when it comes to the frequency of their eating and sort of the uh, way they spread their meals out. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's get into weight training because this is where people can get very uh, confused with things, focusing on cardio and high-intensity interval training and CrossFit-type workouts and what I tend to call the circus workout. I've gotten a little bit of flack <laughs> from calling it the circus workout, but I think when you use terms like that, I'm not trying to be derogatory. I'm more just trying to help create an image in your mind to help you understand why it might be silly to do workouts that are so varied. I mean, we've all seen these, you know, what I call, quote, circus workouts. You know, it involves, you know, swinging a kettlebell, juggling a rope, you know, um, going over here, standing on one leg, BOSU ball and doing some curls, then doing some jumping jacks, then running around the block, then coming around and doing some power cleans, and then, you know, jumping on a rowing machine, and then jumping on a bike, and then doing some burpees. And, and you might as well jump through a hoop and juggle some flying, you know, uh, some, some flaming swords as well, right? It's like all this stuff, but nothing is repeated, and nothing, uh, you know, really creates enough of a stimulus for the muscles to grow. And this comes out of, you know, uh, the popularity. Sometimes people call this, well, you're trying to do muscle confusion, uh, you know, where you're, you're keeping the muscles confused so they can adapt. And really, this is largely a myth. The only thing um, that muscle confusion does is confuse your body how to gain muscle, really. I mean, it's just confusing for the body. The body, when it's trying to gain muscle, what you want to think about is, Workouts that are less varied and more simple. In other words, you want the big, full body, simple movements that get the entire body moving, right? So what would these be? Things like squats, deadlifts, overhead presses, bench press, those kinds of things. In fact, to me, the simplest workout you could do if you're someone who really wants to gain muscle and you're kind of a beginner at this is simply do squats, deadlift, bench press, you know, bent over row or pull up, and you pretty much have the kind of workout that I'm talking about here. Now, you want to keep it simple. You don't want to be varied. You want to move away from muscle confusion because that's not really a thing. And you want to, uh, you know, really focus on these simple movements. Now, Again, doing things like CrossFit and stuff like that is wonderful in terms of trying to multitask. In other words, it can help you perhaps for some people like me build some muscle, but for most people that's going to just be really great for building fitness and maybe burning some fat, but less great for helping put on size. And so for putting on size, keep it simple, keep the movement simple. We call these in, you know, uh, the exercise world compound exercises, meaning that they are using multiple muscles and multiple joints. And we also want high volume. This is the thing that causes the muscles to grow and get the stimulus they need, puts them under tension for long periods of time and also builds up sort of metabolic stress. There's two things that really, uh, you know, kick off growth in the muscle. And this is sort of tension stress, how much time under tension um, is the muscle, you know, sort of having to deal with. And you can I kind of call this the straining effect or the heavy effect. And then also when you work out and you get this burning in your muscles, that's an 
that's an indication that you're building up a lot of metabolic byproducts, what we now know are called myokines, these muscle signaling molecules that sort of build up in the body and can have some uh, muscle building effects like IL-5 and, or, I'm sorry, IL-15 is one of the, the myokines. It's a lot like, uh, it's, a, it's a metabolic multitasking hormonal signaling molecule like the combination of human growth hormone and testosterone. But without worrying about all that biochemistry, all you really need to think about is high volume. What is volume when it comes to lifting weights? Well, it is sets times reps times the weight lifted. Here's what to sort of understand, and we'll try to make the math easy. But if I lift 100 pounds 10 times, my body does a certain amount of work. My body does the exact same amount of work if I lift 10 pounds 100 times. In other words, lift 100 pounds 10 times or, or 10 pounds 100 times, and the volume is the same. And so in exercise research, if they're really trying to be careful, they try to equate volume. So yes, you can lift lighter weights for lots and lots of reps so long as you accumulate a large volume. Or you could lift heavy weights for fewer reps just as long as you get a large volume. And what we oftentimes find out is that going too heavy oftentimes will lead to less volume and going too light will lead to less volume. And so there's this sort of sweet spot. And in the exercise research, that sweet spot typically lies around the 8 to 12 repetition range. In other words, you want to use a weight that is moderately heavy, typically, you know, 65% to 80% of a one rep max on a lift. And that will typically allow you to lift that weight 8 to 12 times. Now, if you can't get the weight lifted at least eight times, or you can only get five or six or seven, then you may want to lighten the weight a little bit. And if you can lift it way more than 12 times, you may want to um, add some weight. So this is going to depend. Now, this is just general rules, but in general, it's the volume that is important. And oftentimes, there's a bell-shaped curve with volume. Go too heavy, and you won't be able to lift the weight that many times. Go too light and you won't be able to accumulate the amount of volume that you need. And so these are the things that you need to gain muscle. CCPW, calories, you need a calorie surplus. Carbs, you need to eat them. 40% of your macronutrient ratio is a good place to start. Protein, you absolutely need to have protein on board because that is the building block of muscle. One gram per pound of body weight if you are someone who has a difficult time gaining muscle. One gram per pound of lean body weight if you are someone that has an easy time building muscle. And then you want a weight training regime that is simple, uses fewer compound movements, and, and gets a very large volume into that uh, particular workout. That's the way you want to be sort of thinking about how to build muscle. And I'll say one more thing about the weight training component, and then we can end this podcast. The thing to know and understand is that not only do you need, uh, you know, sort of a high volume workout, and not only do you need to keep it pretty simple, but you also need to repeat these same exercises and these same workouts week after week after week because the body responds to progressive resistance. In other words, you are not going to be able to put on muscle unless the body says, oops, we've been doing this workout and I am not strong enough or have enough muscle on me to get this work done. But it will adapt pretty quickly. So pretty soon, 100 pounds lifted 10 times is now 100 pounds that you can do 15 times and you'll have to raise that weight up to 110 or 115, or 120, and you do that uh, over and over again each week. And typically, if you were going to ask me, Jade, I want to put on muscle, how can I do it? I would say, well, you want to have a high-volume workout, simple workouts repeated over and over again, week in and week out for an 8- to 12-week period, and you need to get, obviously, the diet right, the CCP part, calories, carbs, and protein, and then you are going to be able to gain muscle. So when you think about muscle gain, it's actually not that difficult, but there are some misunderstandings that people have around diet 
and training. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys and this is useful. And I'm going to end the podcast there, and I will see you next time.